Hello folksies, it's Ariella here with another episode for Ariella University. I am making Irish soda bread today. Now we missed St. Patty's Day. Uh, I had plans, great plans that just went awry like everything else in the world right now. Um, but soda bread's delicious and can be eaten anytime. Um, and it's great because it's one of these quick bread so you don't you're not using yeast it doesn't need to rise um there it's pretty easy to put together um if you've got some basics then um you'll be able to do that so we're going to do it now i'm not a great baker it's not my forte if you've watched my other videos you know that i um i kind of i'm not great at being precise and um baking is all about being precise so i do my best my uh, my brother-in-law used to say that I was a hurricane in the kitchen. He's a professional chef. I'm not entirely sure whether it was a compliment or not, um, but <laughs> it's either hurricane or tornado. It was some sort of natural disaster. So, um, but we're gonna bake today because dang it, we can do it. So I have I've got my recipe book out. I like to use the America's Test Kitchen recipe, but I mess with it a little bit because again, not great at being precise, okay? So the first thing, um, I've got a big mixing bowl. Um, you can use any large bowl that you've got. Um, I'm gonna take out what they ask for. They, they are asking for three cups of one kind of flour all purpose and then another cup of cake flour. I don't have cake flour, so I'm using four cups of all purpose. Um, so I'm gonna go, I got lucky and was able to get some. I know it's hard to get flour right now. Um, there are still some mills that are, um, that have it available online and hopefully it's the sort of thing that will get restocked. Um, it's amazing how many folks are getting flour right now. Like everyone should be making baking videos. Come on now. Um, so, all right, so four cups of flour. I am astonished I didn't lose track because that's another thing that I like to do when I'm baking. Um, all right, two tablespoons of sugar. Um, you can see my sugar's a little low. But that's all right, we'll make do. All right, and then we've got one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Um, that's the orange box or, you know, whatever, whatever brand you use in my house, it's always been the orange box. Now in terms of that half teaspoon, and this is why it's called soda bread, right? Because it's got baking soda in it. Um, I have a half teaspoon measuring spoon, so I'm going to use that. But if you don't have one, you can just use, um, your teaspoon and just kind of eyeball it to half. I know we're not supposed to eyeball when it comes to baking, but I have found that it's okay in this instance, all right? Um, all right, so now the cream of tartar. This is the one thing that you might not just randomly have in your kitchen. It also might be something that's still available in stores, I'm not sure, um, but it is, there's probably a substitution for it. It's like an acidic, there's an acidity to it, I think it's, or maybe it's the opposite, maybe it's, see, I'm not a scientist, I'm not even a baker, so. We're going to go with it. All right, so one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar, and I'm using my half teaspoon, and I'm just going to do three of them because um, it's a little bit easier. Um, we can look up on the Googles and see what are our options for um, substituting out cream of tartar stuff. All right, so cream of tartar, done. Um, and then salt. Now, the recipe also calls for butter, and it calls for unsalted butter. I don't ever keep unsalted butter in the house. So when a recipe calls for unsalted butter, I usually use less butter, or I'm sorry, less salt um, than the recipe calls for to balance that out. Um, I have done that before in this recipe, and apparently I didn't like the way it turned out because I actually wrote in my, in my cookbook, keep in with an exclamation mark, knowing full well that I'd forget every single time and keep leaving the salt out thinking I wouldn't need it. So I'm gonna leave it in. One and a half teaspoons, I'm probably gonna do, yeah, scant teaspoons because that was one and I'm not even using my half. So here's my, see, that is a scant half teaspoon. That means not quite. Um, and those are all your dry ingredients. And now it says whisk it up. Do you need a whisk to do this? No, you do not. You can just whisk it up with a fork because, um, 
it's perfectly functional that way. All right, so once those items are all sort of blended in together, you're gonna add your softened butter. Now, I made biscuits this morning and you need cold, cold, cold butter for biscuits, but for this recipe, it asks for you to do softened butter. My house is freezing, so it's a little hard to soften, but I did try. I've got two tablespoons of butter here that I started to cut up before we filmed today. So I'm gonna just keep cutting up into these cubes, drop them into the butter, I'm sorry, into the dried mixture. Um, and you also need to have another tablespoon of butter that you're gonna use for the crust, but we'll talk about that once it's baked. Um, all right, so there I'm dropping it in. And then the next step is to go ahead and sort of mush that butter just like you would. Now, when I made the biscuits, it was really important to keep that butter cold. And so using your fingers is not really recommended because it's um, uh, better to keep the butter cold so that you have flaky, flaky biscuits, which incidentally I did have. Um, they were super tasty. Um, so for this one, it doesn't matter as much. So you just want to keep sort of uh, using it until they it, it resembles coarse crumbs. That's the directions that they give us. Um, so we're just finding those hunks of butter, sort of like rubbing them together. If you want to do this with a pastry um, cutter, if you have such a thing, which I do somewhere packed away in a box, um, or just knives, you can do that too, I guess. The directions actually specifically say to do it with your fingers. So um, I find that my fingers are pretty good tools for all manner of things. So you just kind of keep doing that until it looks like crumbs and you don't have any like big hunks of butter left. You just want to make sure that they're all sort of broken apart. It's This is a really dry dough. Um, when I make sourdough, the dough is wet and sloppy and sticky and a mess, but, um, the Irish soda bread dough is a much drier dough. Um, all right, so I think I've gotten all my little bits and pieces. Yeah, I don't feel any more big clumps, so I'm going to kind of like rub and tap some of this off of my fingers right now. And we'll wash that. Well, actually... I'm gonna have to get a messy in just a second anyway because um, there's gonna be more mixing. So I'm gonna go ahead, oh, I think I'm gonna take off my watch is what I'm gonna do, and um, add in the buttermilk. Now, I happened to acquire some buttermilk from a friend of mine who made soda bread and had extra buttermilk. But if you don't have buttermilk, do not fret. You do not need buttermilk. There's a lot of alternatives. So for one, um, there is, uh, there's actually powdered buttermilk that you can acquire, might still be available out there. Um, and this is uh, the reduced fat. You can get the reduced fat, you can get the regular, not, it doesn't really matter. I have found that it, it still produces a delicious loaf of bread. Um, and then the other alternative is if you have milk, what you're gonna do any kind of milk, although the bread, you know, the higher the fat, the, the richer the bread will be, um, you'll take the measurement that I'm giving you for, um, which is, what is it? One and a half cups, I think. Yeah, one and a half cups of buttermilk. So for every cup of milk that you use before you put it into um, your dried goods, you'll add one tablespoon of vinegar. So for the one and a half cups of milk, you'll want to add one and a half tablespoons of vinegar to it. And that will actually give it the same, um, I think it's acidity that, that buttermilk has, which is what makes buttermilk. It like does something scientific with the, I don't know, the gluten. I don't know what it does. I don't know. Watch Alton Brown for that. I'm just gonna make soda bread. So, all right, so we're gonna add buttermilk. It's thicker than milk. Looks a little clumpy, kind of gross, but it does what it needs to do. All right, so I'm adding one and I'm just gonna eyeball. Now, you're sitting there going, Ariella, you're using a dry cup measurer to measure out liquid. What are you doing? You're supposed to know what you're doing. Okay, so first of all, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. I literally only learned that these are dry good measurements and that the pyro or like the glass ones are liquid measurements 
maybe a year ago. I am a grown woman. No idea. And you know what? It's not stopped me from making all kinds of things. So when I make sourdough, I weigh everything to the gram. But for this stuff, um, if I don't need to do that, then I don't. So I'm starting the process of mixing this buttermilk in and it's gonna form this kind of crazy shaggy mess. It doesn't really look like anything. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. We have to turn on our oven. So you're gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Um, I have a convection oven, but I have no idea how it works because you know we just got it. So I haven't played around with it yet. And now is not the time to be playing around with it because I wanna make bread right now. So I'm just going with a traditional um, oven setting, 400. Um, and all right, so if you look at this, if we get a close up on the dough. It's all shaggy and a big mess, all right? So I'm going to stop mixing it with the fork. I'm gonna move all of my little accoutrement out of the way. I'm gonna move my recipe thing out of the way up here because we're going to get to the point where we're gonna actually need it um, here on this surface. So now with my hand, which was already kind of a mess, I'm sort of smooshing it together and you see how it's starting to come together. Now here's the thing with soda bread. It is a dry dough, like I said, um, and you don't wanna work it until it's a smooth, perfectly lovely elastic dough like you would for bread, that you might for bread because it's gonna make the dough um, or the bread tougher. So now I'm dumping it out on my thing and we're gonna just start kind of squishing it together because you wanna make it into um, like a cohesive uh, lump. <laughs> so attractive, lump of bread. Um, you might lose some bits on the sides, but um, the interesting thing with flour that I've learned in this last year that I've been doing a lot more bread making um, is that it does absorb the liquid over time. So if you just sort of give it a little bit of time. Now, I think that the directions in the cookbook say to sort of do the kneading process, which is what I'm doing right now, um, 12 to 15 times, but not necessarily more than that, because again, we don't want that tough bread. But I'm just trying to get to the point where I have a lump of dough, I do like saying lump of dough, that is mostly cohesive. And the recommendation in the um, in the recipe is that, I haven't gone 12 to 15 yet, so I want to give it a little bit more, um, is that it turns into a six inch uh, diameter round thing. That's what Irish soda bread looks like. Um, and about two inches tall. So you can kind of keep going like that. All right, and I think I want to be done now with the the kneading point because I don't want to make it too tough. Um, all right, so I'm now getting it, now I'm just shaping it so that we can get it to be, now it's like an oval. I want it to be round. Round, and um, so that I just, it's like, okay, that's about six inches across and about, yeah. And if it has like a little crack here, that's okay. It's gonna be fine. It'll, um, when it bakes up, it will actually be, it's like relatively forgiving. Um, and then you are gonna smear the whole thing with butter at the end anyway. So this bread I have found makes really yummy leftovers. It's good fresh because all bread is good fresh, but toasted next day with a little cream cheese. Yummy. All right, I'm gonna bake this one in a cast iron pan. I didn't heat it before. There's probably people who are screaming at me through the screen right now saying that I have to heat it before, but I didn't. Um, I greased the pan. I'm gonna take my, my bread lump. It's okay, again, if there's like shaggy bits and there's like cracks in it and all of that, it's gonna be fine. It's not that, not, not that complicated. So, all right, so now I have all this sort of leftover. It's gonna, 
I know it's like waste not want not, but I don't even know. If I can get it to stick together, then sometimes I'll attach it on. Just, I don't know that that's recommended. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't like to follow rules. All right. Actually, I do like to follow rules, just not in baking. All right, so um, I've got my bread and my cast iron. I've got to wait for my oven to get to 400, and then I'm just going to stick it in the oven. And then at that point, it bakes for about an hour at 400 degrees. Um, it'll get nice golden brown. Um, you can, um, well, I'll come back. I'll let you see it when it's done. All right, thanks. Okay, so we're back and I have taken the soda bread out of the oven. Now, I totally messed up in a couple of ways and I want to talk about it. I thought about re-filming this, but we already talked about the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. So, it's been a little bit since I made soda bread, so I totally forgot to score the top of the bread. So, if you look at it, you'll see that what happens when you make a little slice, maybe a quarter of an inch of the way down, um, to split it, it gives it a natural place to split. And since I didn't do that, the bread had to decide where it was going to split and it happened there. Also, I said that the bread needed an hour in the oven and it's actually more like 45 minutes. So um, you take a skewer, you use a wooden skewer if that's what you have, and you stick it into the bread. And if the skewer comes out clean, then the bread is done. Um, you can also use a temperature gauge and if it's 185 degrees on the inside, it's done. So I've pulled it out. Um, and then what it, you're supposed to take about a tablespoon of butter and brush it all over the top. I am not going to do that. I'm going to take my stick of butter and I'm just going to rub it over the top, which I actually already did a little bit. So I'm not going to do it all the way, but it will, it will look dry. Um, when you first take it out until you rub the butter on and then it gets this nice golden color and then the heat from the bread will um, and then my butter looks all munched up but that's okay because we're just going to use it to spread more on the butter and on the bread anyway so there is my Irish soda bread I hope you make it don't be afraid of baking bread it's not that hard um, you would just watch me do it and I don't know what I'm doing so <laughs> all right go learn something new today